Hi everyone, I am Jason Morgan, editor of Fleet Equipment, and welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. Today we're talking with Pete Rousseau, Senior Vice President of Product Innovation and Strategy for Decisive. Pete, how is everything on your end and in the decisive world? Going great, Jason. Um, glad to be here. And yeah, decisive work, uh, you know, even with all of the the slowdowns in the industry and the challenges in the industry, of course, the trucks keep rolling, service uh, has to keep happening, and uh, that's where we're supporting our customers today. So we're really busy right now, actually, keeping them up and running and happy with the uh, with our solutions and then looking ahead, really, we're, we're taking this time as well to look ahead to what are new innovations, capabilities that we can bring to the table uh, to our customers, you know, going into next year when they start uh, ramping up further activity. For sure, we've been watching the the numbers you've been releasing on the service uh, service instances track per week. Glad to see the service is still going, and it's true, trucks are still out there rolling. I got one parked in my driveway right now doing some work, <laughs> and so I'm outside trying to keep the noise down. Today we're talking about something really cool. We've been talking about for a while, uh, predictive maintenance, and when we talk about that, uh, it sounds like a lot of pie in the sky, futuristic. Um, kind of technology, but we're edging closer to it, right? So I'm glad you could take the time. I want to get a sense for where we stand now and what's going to enable uh, the predictive maintenance solutions going forward. So we'll just start with the first question. You know, as it stands today, what is that reality of predictive maintenance and how far out do you think that is? Well, uh, I'll start with the short answer. I, I think predictive maintenance is here. Uh, and it really comes down to you know, components of it. But if we look at just the technology itself, so there's the technology side and then there's operationalizing it, right? So the technology side, the technology uh, has existed. And, um, you know, if you look at the manufacturing industry and, and industrial plants and things like that, they've been using predictive maintenance, but they, they control everything, right? That's a very closed environment. Everything is there under that roof. So we have a bit much bigger challenge in the uh, trucking industry, trucking and transportation industry. That asset is moving and uh, we don't always control all the variables. We don't all have all of the data that we need, right? Because we need to be tracking all of the, the uh, service data, repair data, of course, all of the sensor data and everything else to put it all together. So, so for us in this industry, really all of the piece parts are there and coming online more and more, you know, so like it starts with having all of that sensor data, you know, the, there's more and more sensors in the vehicles, uh, you know, more and more uh, ways to get that data. Um, so that's a big part of it. And then you have to build all of the analytics on top of that. And so if we take that piece part, you know, we have the analytics now, uh, you know, and the AI and machine learning work to come up with the predictive models and things like that. Um, you know, and then of course, uh, ways to manage the actual scheduled maintenance process, um, you know, taking advantage of that, uh, of that learning. And then we have to close the loop too, right? We have to, whatever work was done, we have to see, did it actually, like, what is the quality of the, the service? Like we need to measure that result to see if the predictive maintenance is, is meeting the need. So getting all those pieces together, that I would say we don't have that yet in the industry. And that's probably, you know, two years, three years, I would say out before, like you could just say, go to somebody and say, okay, let's, I want to roll out predictive maintenance. Like today, you know, there'd be a lot of heavy lifting for, for somebody to do it. And if they have more control of all of the variables, you know, if it's a fleet that has their own shops and does all their own work and, has all the sensors and everything, uh, you know, they have a better shot of doing that today than somebody who, for example, does manage maintenance and has leased assets and some managed care assets and some of their own, you know, and has a very mixed environment, you know, controlling all of that uh, would be a lot more challenging, I think, today. Right. For sure. So putting it in place in terms of the operational side, let's go with your easier example, just because that's a we can we can understand that one. 
say I'm a, I'm, I'm a fleet, I have my own equipment, I run my own shops, mostly for preventative maintenance, right? Any maybe heavier maintenance I, I contract out. What are those stepping stones that'll, that, that will kind of get me to that point? Like what would I see from like a service provider on your end? And then, and then what would I need to put in line and on my end? Yeah, for sure. Step one, connected everything. So uh, we want the connected vehicle. Uh, we want the, the networks to be connected also, the service network, so we can uh, exchange data with the service network. <clears throat> And then, uh, uh, and then you know, be able to get that that closed loop of the of the data. So, um, so really, if we think of it as the four C's, different different from the three C's of the complaint cause and correction, right? For a particular repair event, but for for implementing this kind of process, the first one, the connect connectivity, I just talked about that. Next one is communication capability. You know, so how do I communicate? Uh, you know, what service needs to be done, whether that's in an automated way um, or somebody got an alert or notification. And uh, if, if it is predicting a failure is going to happen, then I need to turn that into action. You know, so that's my third C, which is control. You know, I, every, I, I take my PM alerts or notifications or it could be a recall or, or whatever, any of those variables that I want to schedule maintenance for. Um, and then finally, if, if I implemented all of those, then I have a consistent service process for managing all of that. And that that service process has to span all of the parties that are involved in that. You know, if it is my own shop, um, you know, and then managing the, the logistics of when can I get the, the, the unit in, you know, and, and how close is it to the um, to the service interval that was predicted or to the failure that was predicted or anything like that. So, uh, so really, again, you know, getting those main things, the connectivity in place, the ability to communicate, having that control mechanism, that loop of, you know, the alerts or notifications going to the action of scheduling the maintenance. Um, and then finally that consistent service process, you know, that's measurable ultimately. Right, right, right. So, uh, you know, a logistics and scheduling aside from the fleet uh, point of view, when it comes to the maintenance, the truck is in the shop. Uh, how can I make sure that I'm collecting the right data there, right? I know that's near and dear to the decisive heart of, of getting that data. Sure. Uh, what's my responsibility there? What systems and solutions can help me? And then also, I, also, what do I need to pay attention to in terms of, to your point, closing that data loop, giving the feedback and getting that rolling? Uh, do you have any insight there? Sure. I mean, yeah, you mentioned our, our solution. Like one, one of the things that, that we try to do, and, you know, I, we know some of the large fleets that we work with are, are trying to do the same thing. You know, they need to aggregate all the, the right data. We talk about that a lot, having the right data at the right time, you know, in front of the right person, right? So, um, so being able to collect First of all, the, the data from the manufacturer about the vehicles and recalls and campaigns and this kind of information. Um, and, and more and more, the OEMs are, are creating APIs for that and, and starting to offer that as, as a data service to their, to their fleets. Um, so getting uh, that kind of data, certainly the repair history, you know, ideally it, if, if it's been in my shop, I have all of that repair history. But if I'm visiting other service networks, uh, that's the next big chunk of data I want to have. What you know, what repair has been done? Uh, then the next piece is all of the diagnostic data I can get my hands on. So whether that's if it's a the manufacturer, remote diagnostics from the telematics, or I have my own telematics providers giving me fault codes, or I have plug-in diagnostic tools. So now I've got that piece of data uh, as well. And then of course, you know, the, uh, um, uh, you know, any conversations with drivers or inspection results or any of that. So now I have, that's all of the data I should be trying to collect and aggregate in one place, um, you know, to, to accomplish whatever I need to accomplish for that repair or service event. Um, and then, uh, 
you know, once that's completed, just as you were talking about, I, I want to be able to collect all of the details about that. And ideally, I'm doing that with VMRS coding. And, uh, you know, so I can, if I do want to share that data with anybody later, um, you know, I can do that in a standardized way and maybe in a generic way where I'm not necessarily giving away my particular labor operations or part numbers or any of that kind of stuff, right? Um, so that's uh, that's kind of like the data we want to collect. Um, at, at a higher level, there's, you know, if I'm really looking at measuring the effectiveness of that program, I also need other data just about the performance of the PMs. You know, how how often, uh, like, are my PMs being performed on time? You know, PM compliance, are they actually being performed? Um, you know, and the and repairs, how many repairs do I have between my PM intervals? Uh, so there's this type of data also that I want to collect if, if I'm going to, have everything I need to come up with like predictive maintenance scheduling and keep tuning and modifying those algorithms. Um, right, so, so it sounds like uh, uh, just even the, the, the first kind of step, collecting all that data, right, which is the onus is on the fleet, I need to be able to bring that on. But working with my service providers to make sure that's in a form that's usable and we can start putting it in the places that I need to, and then having that visibility, right? I mean, I know we we talked a lot about visibility in terms of the uh, equipment operational side, uh, improving fuel efficiency and that kind of thing. But that same idea is now coming to the service where you need to be able to see all this. You mentioned the PM effectiveness, which is a really cool angle. And, and the idea that, um, I mean, it can be really intimidating as a fleet to try to wrap your head around this, right? But in the same way they work with their equipment partners, they should be able to work with their service providers to, to get a handle on this. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And more and more, we're seeing that. Um, I mean, we work with with service providers to connect them with fleets, but also we work with, um, you know, even other partners that that don't use our applications. You know, we have APIs so we can connect their service network, their system to the fleet to be able to get them that data. So tying together all of the, um, you know, all of the participants in the process. Uh, you know, we can help fleets do that, but there, there's ways for fleets to do that. And we see them working on doing that themselves as well as more and more manufacturers and service providers are building out their own integration points, APIs, and so on to, to offer this. For sure. We see it coming down the road. Getting ahead of it at all is always good, especially in this kind of environment with a lot of uncertainty and, and being able to get the most uh, out of your service network and, and process is big. Pete? Thank you so much for taking the time. That was uh, extremely inf insightful. I predict that we will talk again soon. Uh, All right. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> good. And good luck with your uh, repairs and maintenance there <laughs> at home. Thank you. Thanks for putting up with it. Uh, it. I lived up to my unscripted moniker today, I think. Outstanding. Very good. Talk with you soon. Okay, thanks.